Vincent de Paul, The Lazarus Mission, and French Catholic Reform by Alison Forrestal. This book is a major reassessment of the thought and activities of the most famous figure of the 17th century French Catholic Reformation, Vincent de Paul. This is the first study to assess de Paul's activities against the wider backdrop of early modern Catholic religious reform and Bourbon political rule. Alliston Forrestal shows how de Paul worked productively with a broad network of male and female associates in efforts to influence the character of devotional belief and practice within the Church. This work challenges dated and hagiographic myths on de Paul's achievements and uses an unprecedented range of widely dispersed primary resources to create a convincing body of evidence for the reconstruction of de Paul's thought, work, and relationships. The reason that I began working on Vincent de Paul and in particular looking at the early years of the Congregation of the Mission um, is because um, I found uh, Vincent de Paul a very compelling figure. As I began to do postgraduate research and then did uh, postdoctoral research and into my first jobs, I uh, became more and more aware of Vincent de Paul as a historical figure uh, in the Catholic Reformation and in 17th century France as well. The theme really of the book is the theme of mission and the construction of mission. I'm thinking of mission uh, in ways in which Vincent de Paul understood mission himself. So the um, mission uh, refers to the uh, sending out, if you like, or the sense of being sent to evangelize in specific ways. And over time, he developed a very clear vision. But Vincent de Paul didn't really use the term reform. He didn't, um, he didn't see himself uh, um, as part of a, a large movement and to him he was simply part of a continual process of eternal renewal of the church. So he is relatively moderate uh, in his approach to anti-Protestantism and works towards reform, works towards the defeat of Protestantism uh, indirectly by attempting to set the church's own house in order. Vincent de Paul doesn't uh, invent the wheel or reinvent the wheel. He uses practices that were and ideas that were traditional, some, uh, others which were contemporary and innovative in that sense. But the way in which he applies them or uh, the way in which he applied them uh, was very systematic. Uh, it was very sustained and it required, um, it required an astonishing uh, eye for detail uh, and vision as well. His ability to maintain different types of relationships with individuals is also uh, very notable. And all of those things are key, I think, in the success that he actually has. Um, in terms of trying to think about the relationships, uh, one needed to, I needed to look at personal relationships with individuals like uh, Louise de Maurer, like for example. Um, but I also needed to look at relationships which were essentially epistolary relationships. So relationships, um, for example, with Alain de Solmignac, who is the Bishop of Cahors, who effectively acted as a kind of agent uh, for uh, Vincent de Paul in the Southwest from the 1640s onwards. So it's a, it's a very interesting um, uh, aspect of the research to examine the different types of relationships and also the, way, the ways, the modes, if you like, by which those relationships were sustained in paper and in person. I concentrate on the confraternities of charity uh, in the book and I concentrate um, a good deal on the ladies of the Hôtel Dieu and in particular on a, an inner circle uh, of about a dozen ladies who really had quite a, a privileged affinity uh, with Vincent de Paul. And I found some really interesting things there. Uh, I looked in detail at the way in which um, the privileged affinity which these women enjoyed with uh, Vincent de Paul, and I suppose I could say as well that equally he enjoyed a privileged affinity with them, uh, this is a two-way process, really uh, transfers or crosses from simply what would be considered by historians perhaps as uh, the gendered concerns of female charity. These women also became major donors to the other elements of the Lazarus work, uh, missions in particular, uh, to a certain extent seminaries as well, and ordinance retreats. So in all, I looked, I visited, or I took documents from um, 31 non-CM uh, archives, which is uh, an enormous range of documentation. And um, 
the documentation could be very piecemeal, but coupled with the correspondence and coupled with the conferences, um, I was able to build up a, a, a very strong profile in a lot of areas um, which uh, were not mentioned in the letters really, or were dealt with in a very summary way in the letters. Um, and that was a, a really useful experience in detective work. I hope one of the most important results of my research on Vincent de Paul will, will be that historians have now, outside the CM, um, will have a much better sense of what Vincent de Paul's uh, purpose and objectives were. But the history of the Congregation of the Mission after 1660 is not a history of poor priests of the countryside. It's far from it. So I think um, in order to understand why that became, became the case, in order to understand perhaps differences and distinctions from the original vision of the founder, um, one needs to go back to Vincent de Paul and to look at him in a new way uh, as part of uh, this major reform movement of the 17th century.